Good afternoon. Welcome to my laboratory. Uh, as you know, we've just gotten a new uh, Rigol DS1054Z oscilloscope in the lab here. Uh, and uh, thanks to a very generous crowdfunding effort put together by some friends of mine. And what I want to do now is show the difference between uh, an analog oscilloscope's picture and the DSO's picture when looking at a slow signal. Now what I've got here is the uh, perpendipendulum, uh, light-powered pendulum going on. It's running now off of the light from this desk lamp right there. And I have two oscilloscope probes hooked up across the coil. The coil is the, the green thing in the bobbin right there. So one probe goes to the analog scope, the Tech 2213A, and the other probe goes to the digital scope, the Rigol DS1054Z. And uh, as you can see, the period of the pendulum is quick, 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 about that long. So. I have both scopes set to the 200 millisecond per division, or one-fifth of a second per division setting. And as you can see, is that dust on there or what? As you can see, the analog scope is tracing along, brushing off some of the dust, see if that helps. Uh, no, maybe that's glare or reflection. Yeah, that's what that was. So the analog scope is tracing along, and you can see it going blip, 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 blip. You can see a little rise and then a pulse, a little rise and then a pulse. But you can't really see much detail because the trace doesn't stay on the screen. Even though this is a long persistence phosphor, uh, you don't see much. And if you go to uh, faster time base, you can see that there's something going on in that pulse there, but you can't really resolve it. There's no real way with the analog scope to resolve it. If I do a single shot, that's all I get is a quick pulse and then the phosphor fades. Now I could photograph that but it would still be difficult to actually get and see what's really going on there in that train of pulses. So now let's take a look at what the oscilloscope or the digital oscilloscope shows on that same input signal. So once again I have the scope set to 200 milliseconds per division. I don't know if you can see it or not but that's indicated right up there. And what I'm going to do now is push the single button, single shot button, and when the scope gets a trigger signal it will trace out the signal, what it sees, and then it will stop. Uh, but of course since it's a digital scope the trace remains on the screen, which is really nice. Turn down the intensity a little bit there. Okay. So now you can see a structure to that pulse train. There's a little dip, a positive, and then this pulse thing happening here. And we've got 200 milliseconds, so now you can tell that the period is about 400 milliseconds or so, a little bit over 400 milliseconds. for the uh, spacing in between the pulses, the period of that pendulum. But here's the really neat thing now. What if we want to see what's going on inside that pulse train? Well, we can use the scope's zoom feature, which is really handy. To zoom the time base, you just push down on the uh, horizontal scale button, and then you get the normal time base up there, the zoom window and then what you have zoomed into down here and then by changing the scale you can zoom right in to that pulse train 
turn up the intensity here a little bit. Well, I really like this variable intensity display too. This is very, very, uh, very cute. Okay, so now you're starting to see some resolution in that pulse train. And by changing the position there, now we're starting to be able to see that, that each one of those individual pulses is really made up of a whole bunch of little bitty pulses. Let's expand that even more. So now we've got a really good view of one of the individual pulses in that pulse train. And we can scan back and forth to see other pulses in there. Or we can zoom back out. So I think you can see that for certain kinds of signals, the digital oscilloscope has a bunch of really good advantages over the analog scope. Now there are times when the analog scope would be preferred, but certainly for viewing this kind of a slow pulse with superimposed or, or contained uh, smaller pulses like this, the digital scope just can't be beat. Let's go back to the full screen view. Now if we wanted to find the period of that, we could select cursors on manual, and it just so happens that I already have them set up. The source to the channel 2, which is the channel we're looking at, the nice blue channel, and then I moved the cursors A and cursors B earlier to get one pulse of that train in there and you can see that the difference between the B and the A X cursors is 448 milliseconds or just just under half a second for the period there okay so let's turn the cursors back off and if I go to the run mode now the scope is continuously running and you can see the update as each trigger passage passes through there. Sometimes you can, there it goes. Or you can select stop, clear, and then single shot mode. And it scans one time after the trigger event. And then in the stopped mode you can count on that trace staying put while you explore its details. Alright, thanks for watching. Digital versus analog on a slow signal with embedded faster pulses.